Good morning, friends. I'm glad you're here for this Tuesday teaching time and morning prayer. This is a broadcast that I am doing now once a week, and I want to just welcome you. Some of you have been with me um, over the last about 12 weeks, and I was committed during that time to praying every weekday, especially while many of us were sheltering at home. I live in Central California, um, so we were just, um, I guess you could say released, or those restrictions were lifted this past week. And so in our area, um, lower cases of COVID-19, and so they are opening local businesses in Fresno and Clovis. And I just um, wanna say welcome to some of you who were a part of that 12 weeks of prayer with me. It was an awesome time. It's good to see some of your faces over here on Instagram. Um, I see my friend Esther and Mama Teresa is here, my friend Bev. I see um, Yasmin and I see that my parents, my husband are here with me. Um, I'm going to continue now to be praying on Tuesday mornings and trying to get our, um, our Facebook to work over here. We've been having lots of problems with Facebook and I've been noticing that some of my friends are as well. Um, so just going to share a little message over there. But for those of you on Instagram, I just want to say welcome. This for me is important that we would take time to pray together. And of course, um, in this already difficult and challenging season of COVID-19, now in the last um, few weeks, we have been faced with also um, even more challenges, although this has been going on, this injustice has been going on for a long time in our country. Um, and today I really want us to focus on praying for um, those who are being affected, for the black community, and for all of us who are um, opening our eyes to this injustice right now of um, black men specifically who are being brutalized and we want to remember George Floyd. A couple of weeks ago, we were talking about Ahmaud Arbery, who was killed while he was jogging, and many others. Breonna Taylor. These are just some of the names of precious image bearers of God who have been killed lately, although there is a great history for that. And I know on some social media channels, um, we're seeing a lot of the Blackout Tuesday. You may have noticed that in your Facebook or Instagram feed this morning. Um, there's a movement of people who are taking this day as a day to be silent, um, a day to grieve, a day to listen. And they're calling it Blackout Tuesday um, just to observe that time. So I want to just join in that by continuing what I already had planned. And I don't think it was an accident um, that today I would just spend this time in prayer and that we would specifically pray against racism and for justice in our country. And so I want to... Um, share with you some scripture as I always do and I want to just reflect together and have a time of grief, a time of lament, a time where we listen to what our Heavenly Father says to us about action during this time. Um, last Friday I had the opportunity to share with you from the book of Esther and if you didn't get to hear that broadcast, um, I just wanna encourage you to go back on Facebook. The video is there as well as on Instagram if you go to my IGTV. But I just talked about what Esther did in the face of racism. Esther, um, when she found out about this edict to annihilate the Jews, which were her people, her response was to pray. Her response, along with her uncle or her older cousin Mordecai, was to lament and to grieve. 
and to fast. And Esther gathered the people, Mordecai gathered the people on behalf of Esther, and they took three days for fasting and praying before she took strategic action. So I just want to summarize that as I talked in depth about it on Friday, but I want to do that today. I want us to practice that today, just following the example of Esther. And It's important, I think, that we go to the scriptures always and first that we go to the scriptures and see what it is that God is showing us through the scriptures. So one of the passages that came to mind that I wanted to read from today is in Zechariah chapter 7 verses 8 through 10. Zechariah chapter 7 verses 8 through 10. If you're not familiar with Zechariah, this is a book, one of the prophets, Um, It's kind of towards the end of the Old Testament if you want to follow along with me or you can just listen and maybe look up the whole section, the whole chapter later. Um, But the prophet Zechariah spoke to the people who had returned from the Babylonian exile to Jerusalem and to Judah. And this message, um, this ministry that Zechariah had in sharing the heart of God was really to urge the people to obedience, to prayer, to understanding of the power of the Spirit of God, and to repentance. And this section that I want to read from specifically today in chapter 7 is a call to mercy and justice. And so I think it has some real implications for us as we are thinking about what does it look like to call for justice and mercy in our context today? What does that look like? Um, I wanna also just have us pray as individuals, what is God calling us to do? That each of us has a specific call, that we are specifically designed with gifts and talents and privileges. And so what can we do in the face of injustice? So let's go ahead and read Zechariah chapter 7, the call to justice and mercy, and I'm going to be picking up um, from verse 8. It says, And the word of the Lord came to Zechariah, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Render true judgments, show kindness and mercy to one another. Do not oppress the widow, the fatherless, the sojourner, or the poor, and let none of you devise evil against another in your heart. I want to stop there. Those are verses 8 and 9 of chapter 7 of Zechariah. I see a few new friends who are joining us. So these verses are packed with power. This is a prophecy that the prophet Zechariah is bringing to the people during this time. And there are some mandates, there are some action points that Zechariah is bringing to the people through these verses. The first, it says, render true judgments, or in the ESV version, it says render true judgments. In some of the versions, I like the NIV language that says, administer true justice. And I was thinking about, you know, what does it mean to administer something? Well, I was looking up that word yesterday in my time of study and realizing that to administer something, it means to manage something, it means to give something, it means that um, we are to oversee something. There's action in that word. So to render justice or to administer justice is to give justice, to stand up for justice. And that's what Zechariah is talking about here But it's so interesting because he also follows up with these words, show kindness and mercy to one another. I don't have time to unpack all of the verses in God's word that talk about justice and mercy. But in doing a study on this um, several years ago, I saw that justice and mercy are often talked about together. In fact, the words for justice and mercy, mishpat in the Hebrew for justice and hesed in the Hebrew for mercy, these two kind of go hand in hand. And I literally think about them holding hands, how important it is for us to think about justice and mercy together. And here in Zechariah, it's just another example of how justice and mercy go hand in hand. So it says, render true judgments, show kindness and mercy to one another. 
So in our fight for justice, in the ways that God is calling us today to stand up for justice, to stand up for our black brothers and sisters, to stand up against racism, systematic racism that has been part of our country's history for years. This is something that we need to pay attention to as well, that in that process that we show kindness and mercy to one another. It goes on to say, do not oppress the widow, the fatherless, the sojourner, or the poor, and let none of you devise evil against another in your heart. I love that this is part of what Zechariah uses in sharing God's word to kind of break it down. And our God, he has a heart for the vulnerable. Again, these words, these groups of people are mentioned, not just this one time in Zechariah, but often throughout the Old Testament. And we know if we study the ministry of Jesus, that this was also his heart, that he cared deeply about the widow, about the fatherless or the orphan, about the sojourner, the immigrant, um, the foreigner, in some cases of the word, and he cared deeply about the poor. Um, I read a book called Generous Justice, and in that book, it talks about this idea of the quartet of the vulnerable. So these four groups that are talked about right here in Zechariah and talked about many times throughout the scripture, um, it talks about how God has a heart for these people. And so for us, If we are followers of Christ, if we are believers, we also must share this heart. We must pursue this heart that God has for justice and kindness and mercy and specifically for the widow, the fatherless, the sojourner, and the poor. And that we should not devise evil against another in our hearts. And so this is a tricky time, right? We see that there is much going on in our country right now. There are peaceful protests I was so encouraged to see here in my own city of Fresno, um, in Central California, the peaceful protests that were going on this weekend where pastors and lay people, where children and grandparents were gathering, some of them in silent protest, even just holding signs um, in, in others who were at the rally that was in downtown near City Hall that were praying together, that were speaking out together. And I am encouraged by the way that they were lifting their voices, but with a spirit of kindness and mercy and being able to share their hearts and their lament with that kindness and mercy. But we also see that there is unrest, that there is violence, there are difficult things that are happening across our country. And it's hard for us sometimes to sort through that, that there is a time for righteous anger that injustice has happened for too long in our country, but also that we must be mindful and we must be discerning because we also see, and it's been verified that there are groups who are going out, who are looting, who are rioting, who are trying to stir up trouble, who are trying to oppose the movement that is seeking justice and not violence. And so I'm taking these words from God's word, um, not just to, to get on Facebook and Instagram and to just spout out my opinion. I know it's not time for that. What I'm doing today is urging all of us to bend our knees in prayer. And you know, prayer is actually a very powerful thing that we can do. Prayer is action. And sometimes we don't see it that way. Um, Several years ago, I had the opportunity to attend a conference called the Justice Conference. It was in Chicago. And I heard from one of my favorite authors, Ann Voskamp. And Ann was talking about how prayer is our dove power. It it talks about in God's word that we are to be wise as serpents, um, but gentle as doves. And that prayer is a place where we can have a power to stand up by going to the throne of God offering up our lament, offering up our grief, and asking God specifically what we can do. And so I want to take that time today. Um, I want to take that time that we would pray like Esther prayed. I want to take this time that we would not just fast and pray so that other people would be impressed with us, but that we would bow our heads and our hearts, that we would bow our knee today that we would not be hypocrites, that we would not be Pharisees, 
um, but that we would actually humbly go before God, that we would repent, and that we would pray for ways that we can administer justice, that we can show kindness and mercy to one another, that we can stand up for our black brothers and sisters in this time period. So I'm gonna bow right now, and for those who are listening on, on Facebook, it looks like the broadcast wasn't working, so thank you for those who have stuck with me here on Instagram. Let's just go ahead and pray. And if there are any prayer points that you would like to bring up, feel free, as always, to mention in the comments. Um, I want to start this time of prayer just taking a moment for silence. Lord Jesus, we thank you for today. We humbly come before you on this Tuesday. Lord, we pray on behalf of those who are suffering today. We know that you have a heart for those who are suffering. We know that you have a heart for the most vulnerable. And it tells us in your word over and over again that you are a God of justice and a God of mercy. That in your character, that justice and mercy go hand in hand. And so I want to pray today, leading out and standing alongside the families of George Floyd of Ahmaud Arbery, of Breonna Taylor, of others across our land who have senselessly lost their lives. God, we pray for these families. We pray for just a space that they might grieve, that they might feel their losses. And I know that um, there is very much a public grief that we are all experiencing. But I want to start by praying for that personal grief for those families right now who are suffering, for those families who are grieving the loss of their loved ones. God, the loss of human life is a loss for all of us. And I pray that our hearts would be broken even as these families' hearts are broken in this loss. Lord, show us, show us what you would have us to do. God, we cry out today in lament. We cry out saying no more, no more killing of image bearers, no more loss of life. God, would you have mercy on us for all of us who have participated, whether intentionally or unintentionally, in the racism that pervades this country. God, we repent. I pray, Lord, that we would care for the things that matter most to you. As it says in your word, I think about Matthew 23, how it talks about your heart for justice and mercy, and faithfulness. God, would we be faithful to you during this time? I pray that we would not be like those who are so obsessed with religious practice, with prayer and fasting in public so that others would see us and give us glory because we know that all of the glory belongs to you, Lord. And so I am praying today for humility for all of us, I know that some of us need to sit in the quiet today. That as there is this movement of Blackout Tuesday, that people need to pause, to listen, to be woken up from our complacency for those who do not feel personally affected, that they would feel affected in the way that your heart is affected, Lord. I pray, God, that you would continue to provide a path for us. And Lord, I know that because this is happening on a national level, 
It is so easy for us to get caught up into the politics and the semantics of the movement. But God, I pray that we would return to your heart, that we would return to your heart for your image bearers, that every one of us, no matter our skin color, was created in your image, that you made every one of us unique, that the variance and the diversity that you made us was intentional. And so God, I pray against color blindness today. I pray that we would see each other's color, that we would celebrate each other's cultures and geographic backgrounds our ethnicities, God, because these celebrate the nuances of who you are. I'm praying today, God, that you would show us what it is inside of each of us that we need to work on. I pray that we would be brave to step into the heart work, the anti-racism work, that needs to happen. And I know that it begins with us as individuals. So God, would you show us how to do that? I pray that you would lead us to resources that would speak specifically to our hearts. I pray that you would lead us to your word, to the passages and stories that show us what to do in the face of racism, what to do in the face of injustice, because you are a God of justice and mercy. May you be the one that leads us May we not be angry or reactionary or just following the crowd, but may we move only as you move, God. And I know that um, we are so many years out of the civil rights movement, but I pray today, God, in the spirit of Martin Luther King, that we would move forward peaceably, that there's a space for righteous anger, and it's certainly in your word, that even as Jesus overturned the tables in the temple, when he saw injustice there, God, would you show us that fine line between anger that harms and righteous anger that moves to justice. Lord, I pray that you would give us wisdom as we think about posting on social media, as we think about sharing photos and stories, God, would we be prayerful? Would we have your heart? Would we think about, okay, is this something that I would share with Jesus right now? God, would you guide us in this? I believe that this is a time where organization and bringing people together can be so powerful because of the internet because of social media, but I pray that we would use it for good. I pray for the black community. I pray for my sisters and brothers, people of color who have a layer of suffering in this time. God, I pray that you would lift up their hearts, that you would be Yahweh, that you would put breath into their lungs, into their spirits, that they would walk in their grief with a sense of hope, with a sense of courage and strength and power that only comes through you, God. We denounce racism in this country. We denounce this injustice. We link arms because we know that you have designed us to flourish together, that you have designed us to be in community, and that even in our diversity that there can be unity. So I pray for that today. I pray for all of the cities across the United States who have been experiencing violence and unrest. I pray for the businesses that have been broken into, the looting that has been happening. God, we know that people are frustrated. We acknowledge that there is a reason for that frustration, God. And I pray that even in this, that your light would shine. That in the darkness, there is actually not darkness because your light shines. God, may we be ambassadors of that light today. I pray, God, that we would show the fruit of your spirit 
I pray for love and joy. I pray for peace and patience and gentleness and kindness. I pray for self-control. I pray, God, that you would show us what this means for each of us as individuals, that we would just not follow the pack, that we would not just follow the herd, that we would not be easily offended, but that we would listen with our hearts and with our souls. God, I thank you for the guidance that is in your word. And so I pray just these words of Zechariah that we looked at this morning in chapter seven, I pray that you would show us because you are the Lord of hosts. I pray that you would show us how to administer true justice, how to stand up for justice. I know that looks different for every one of us, God but give us specific action points. I pray that you would empower us to show kindness and mercy, even to those who are difficult to love, even those who rub us the wrong way, who make a comment that is hurtful, God. I pray that you would give us kindness and mercy for them. It's not to back down, but it's to live with the kindness and mercy, the mishpat and hesed that you model all throughout your word. And I pray for those who have been oppressed. I pray for the widow, the fatherless, the sojourner, the immigrant, the poor. I pray for black brothers and sisters. I pray for people of color. God, help us not to be like those in Zechariah's time who refused to pay attention, who turned a stubborn shoulder. God, may we be ambassadors of your love and light. And I pray that in Jesus' precious name today. Amen. Thank you, friends, for joining me here on Instagram for this time of prayer this morning. I will be here every Tuesday now for Tuesday teaching and a time of prayer. Just want to continue to um, lift up all those who are suffering in our country and it just so happened that today on this um, blackout Tuesday, as some of some people are calling it, that I had already planned this prayer gathering. I want to urge you to continue to pray, to pray in your homes, to pray with your people, maybe even if it requires getting on Zoom or Facebook, that we would unite in prayer, that we would bend our knees in prayer as our first step of action against this injustice that is happening in our country. And I also wanna empower you with some resources. You know that I love sharing books and resources. And so there's a couple of things that I wanna offer you today that are written by some of my friends. This workbook called What Lies Between Us is written by my friend Lucretia Beery, Dr. Lucretia Carter Beery. And this, um, this book is a journal and a guide just really to foster first steps toward racial healing um, Lucretia is a dear friend of mine who writes for the same website, Encourage, that I write for as well. And I've had the privilege of getting to know her and hearing her heart and her life work, not just reactionary work right now because of what's happening in her time, but the work that she's devoted her life to is in educating people towards racial healing. It is anti-racism work. And so I just want to urge you to check out her website, Brownicity. Com. She also has a Facebook group and she offers courses. She offers resource guides and lists. Um, she offers great resources, especially for parents who want to navigate this with their children. And I love the work that Dr. Lucretia Berry is doing right now. I've had the privilege of being able to sit under her teaching and some of her resources. So I highly recommend checking her out. What Lies Between Us is the journal and guidebook that she wrote and that's available on Amazon. I'll put the link in the comments for you. And also this is another book I wanna recommend by Kathy Kong that just was released more recently. This book is called Raise Your Voice and mine just arrived yesterday in the mail. Um, and it's a book that is very important, I think, for those of us maybe who are not used to speaking up. She talks about how God has given every one of us a voice and that we have permission to use it. And so I wanna urge you to check out this book if you are asking that question, well, how do I raise my voice? How do I speak up in this situation? I don't know exactly what I'm supposed to do or maybe you haven't been involved in these types of conversations before. It begins with the heart work. 
And that's why what lies between us and Brown City is such a great place to start. But then we are also called to use our voices. And I want to read just a short quote from Kathy's book, Raise Your Voice. Um, there's so many great, great quotes in this book, but I was just reading this this morning. And she also is talking about the story of Esther as a model for us of what we can do to pray first, to grieve first, to lament and fast, but then to move into strategic action. And this is what Kathy writes, our individual comfort and safety should always be at risk if we are living out the gospel. When Jesus asks if we are willing to take up the cross, it isn't a comfortable custom fit cross with memory foam and cotton sheets. The invitation is to risk safety and comfort to risk fitting in and risk friendships. And even if we don't have all of the privileges this world offers, we know that being citizens of heaven doesn't excuse us from participating in taking action and speaking up in places that bring about awareness and change, even when it means you step on a few toes of privilege and comfort. I love this call to action. And I was personally convicted as I was already digging into this book um, over the last 24 hours. So again, I would urge you to check out Kathy Kong's Raise Your Voice. It gives us some great action steps with a biblical foundation of how we can speak up. And even though this book was released earlier, it wasn't written just for this time. It is for such a time as this. It gives us the tools that we need this book came out in 2018 from IVP Books, and I highly recommend looking at IVP Books. They have some wonderful resources, many that I've mentioned before, especially if you want to do anti-racism work in your heart and in your community. So friends, thanks for spending this time with me this morning. I love that we get to unite um, through Facebook and Instagram through this technology. And I'm praying for each one of you. I'm praying for wisdom, for mercy, for justice, and that God would show you a pathway that you can walk in during this time, friends. And so I look forward to seeing you again next Tuesday. For any of those who would like to stay in contact more personally, check out my website, DorenaGilmore.com, and you can sign up there for my Glorygram, which is a weekly word that I send out to friends that includes encouragement and recommendations and resources. Bless you, and I'll see you next Tuesday.